Damon Martin, MMA fighting here with former UFC women's bantamweight champion of the world and hopefully coming back sooner rather than later. And also an inductee to the International Boxers Hall of Fame class of 2022. A welcome back today, Holly Holm. Holly, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. And let me start by saying congratulations on your induction. Uh, such Thank a cool you. honor. I mean, such a cool honor. Absolutely. I'm really, really stoked about it. It's, um, you know, when you start fighting, that's just, it's like, man, one of these days, maybe I can be a world champion. And then it's like, you, you look at, you know, all the greats that are in the hall of fame and you think, man, that'd be really cool if that ever, if I could ever do that, but you don't really know if that's ever going to happen. You know, that's, that's not, they don't just let just any boxer in there. And so it's definitely something, um, I feel very, like I said, humbled and honored and, um, I'm excited about it. What I what I like about the International Boxers Hall of Fame is is they are really uh, picky. <laughs> they are really yeah. picky. You do not. You know, there's not just a list of like like I was looking at the modern women's wing. There's four four modern women yeah. in there. You, get, you know, Layla yeah. Ali, Lucia Riker. We're talking about like the absolute cream of the crop. I mean, that's that's awesome, right. right? To get in there. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad that they're like that because it makes it more of an honor to be you know inducted. So, um. You know, I feel like if it is going to be a Hall of Fame, they should be kind of picky, you know. Did you did you have any idea it was coming before they told you? No, actually, I had no idea. Um, I had seen a couple of missed calls, but I'd just been dealing with a lot of stuff. So I hadn't really, like, gotten to my messages. And um, I finally got back to them. And it was actually when they, like, and the same day that they actually announced it, just publicly so i actually had no idea wow that's so crazy and it, like i said i mean it's a it's a pretty exclusive club right i mean when you look at who's in there it's not you know just anybody and everybody who's ever won a title anybody who everybody's had a good record like it's a pretty exclusive club to get in there yeah i'm uh kind of surreal you know just the company that i'm considered to be a part of you know to be able to be considered to be in that same group with all the greatest you know like um never thought i would be considered to be you know in the hall of fame along with you know muhammad ali and mike tyson and you know just i mean we could go on all day about all the greats but um it's just definitely um like i said it's just super humbling I know most fighters I talk to when they get some sort of accolade whether it's hall of fame or just some sort of recognition for something they've done in their career they generally tell me that they don't like to think about it until, you know, after their career is over. But, you know, Holly, to, to consider what you've done is pretty amazing considering you stopped boxing, you know, several years ago after all you had accomplished. And then you come to the UFC and you become a champion. You've been a you know top five ranked fighter pretty much, you know, almost your entire career. I mean, is it, I don't know. It's, it's kind of crazy when you think about all you've done uh, in, in a, in in your in your athletic career i mean again i know you're probably not going to sit here and reflect on it right now but when i'm thinking about it, i'm like it's pretty insane what you've done holly it is it is when i think about it like that it's pretty insane it's, i think the reason why you don't think about it like what you've accomplished is because you're so focused on wanting more and that's where i'm at it's like i i constantly want more i want more victories and i'm still hungry to fight and i'm still wanting you know, greatness. I still want to be the champion and those things are all part of me. So it is hard to like, look back and just think about what I have done because you get, you, you have goals. So you're focused on the future. So I think if I was so focused on what I have done, then I'd probably question where I stood going forward, you know, but having a drive and wanting to still keep driving forward and succeeding um, that's why I think sometimes you don't really think about the accomplishments because you're just so focused on your new goals, you know, you're on your, your current dream. Yeah, absolutely. Well, to that point, Holly, let me ask you, the last time we spoke, it was a couple of weeks out from your last fight. And unfortunately you weren't able to compete against Norma Dumont. And I know that was a weird one anyways. I know we talked about it, that you basically just didn't have anybody willing to fight you. And so you went up to featherweight again, because that was pretty much the only way you could compete. I know you had a little bit of an injury. So let me just ask, how are you feeling? How are you doing? You know, I, I know you were itching to get back in there and fight then. And I'm sure it probably broke your heart to have to drop out of that fight. Oh, I'm, 
I'm super frustrated. Um, I definitely am on the mend, you know, uh, I hope to be back in there, uh, back training and get back in there. You know, I'm, I'm feeling a little better. Uh, I had to take care of some things, but, um, it's super frustrating, especially when I watch all the fights, you know, I see people fighting, especially last weekend, but even all the time, I just, anytime I watch fights, it's like so frustrating. I want to get in there so badly. Um, I have to realize that I, I, you know, one thing I just, I'm kind of just embraced and I want to embrace not being able to fight, but, you know, I've been very fortunate to have a career where I've been pretty active and this last year has just kind of had some, you know, stuff that's been kind of from left field. So, uh, I'm, I'm handling it and going to keep pushing forward. I'm not going to let it break me and I want to be back in there very soon. Yeah. Uh, you, if you don't want to disclose what it was that knocked you out of the fight, that's fine. But was it anything serious? Like you didn't have to have surgery or anything like that. You said it's not going to keep you out for that long. Oh, uh, I mean, it was a, it's a knee injury. It's not, it's not anything like uh ACL or anything like real big, you know, um, it's minor stuff like soap stuff. So it's definitely not like a huge recovery. Um, so it is one of those things I, I expect to be back training in a month but um i mean i'm already being slightly active on it now so i just don't want to like false promise i'm just letting things i'm taking it day by day but um i do feel like i'll be back into full full training soon yeah did you did you watch the fights over the weekend i assume i did i did and um uh you know i always be, want to be the one to be you know to beat someone on a, a winning streak uh it wasn't me it was Pena but you know congratulations to her she performed she went in there and did what she had to do um I you know I don't know really what you don't know really what's behind the scenes in the fights what really goes on you know I think that um Nunez probably wasn't on her best fight game but there's no excuses I think Pena just came in I think you know a lot of people fear Pena's scrambles and her you know she's got takedowns and she's got submissions and she's just kind of a dog and she's you know scrappy and that's what people fear about her and sometimes and and you have to fear everything with any fighter you get in there and I you know Pena she started changing the fight with her jab and it started to take a toll on on Nunez and um I think that's kind of where a lot of the fight started to change um so, you know, I don't know what's going on in the fighters' minds and that, but that's, that was my take on it. I think that, um, I think it kind of caught Nunez off guard, you know, I don't think she was expecting that. And, um, once Pena started landing, she just started keeping on it. So good on her for, for, uh, going in there and performing. Yeah. I mean, we can't lie and say it wasn't a shocking result. You know, no one probably saw that coming and, you know, I've said for a long time, I thought, you know, Amanda's biggest enemy could be her own complacency. And, and it seemed like she kind of, it seemed like she kind of reverted back to the old Amanda in that fight, you know, where she just like, you know, trying to put her out in the first round, she didn't get it. And then she just kind of went yeah. crazy. Like that was the old Amanda yeah. in there. Yep. I agree. I agree. I think, um, you know, that second, she dominated, I mean, not dominated. She did. She, she won the first round. I had Amanda winning the first round. Um, you know, even on the ground, she was on top of Pena. Pena couldn't really do a whole lot. Um, and then when the second round came, I think maybe because it didn't go as the first round planned, then it kind of just caught her in her tracks and they did. She just, she didn't change her game plan. And she kind of just stood in front of Pena and just, you know, they were just exchanging and just, I think, I think she was just kind of, you know what, maybe I can catch her and knock her out. Maybe I can get her. And sometimes that's happened to me in a fight before and it got me knocked out you know i got i got hit a couple times hard and i thought well i'm gonna hit her hard too <laughs> <laughs> lost all of my focus you know so and like i said who knows what really happened uh in the fighter's minds only they know um so i'm not gonna say that amanda wasn't you know it, a lot of times i've fought people before and it's like oh they weren't themselves that night it's like no i didn't let them be themselves i took them out of their game plan so there's there's credit on both sides that way. You know, it's like, you can't really say like, Oh, Nunez just didn't show up. It's like, well, Pena performed. I mean, that's 
it's one of those things that, and listen, there's always going to be stylistic matchups that are going to be bad. Right. Like, you know, I think like if you would like, you know, when you beat Ronda Rousey, everyone said, Oh my God, it was this massive upset, whatever. And afterwards I said, if Holly and Ronda fought 10 times, I think Holly would beat Ronda 10 times. Like, I think you are, you were always just a really bad matchup for her. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that Juliana will beat Amanda in the second fight, but I think the way she right. fought her and, and she got in her face. I mean, again, sometimes that gets, I don't know. We'll see. Can Amanda come back from that? That's a big question now, I guess. Right. And I think that is a big thing too. When a champion gets beat and I mean, don't get me wrong. Amanda won the first round, but second round, she got pretty handled, you know? Um, and there's always the mindset coming back from something like that. I mean, Amanda's had losses and, and had to obviously come back because look where she got to. She's been the champ for a while. And uh, I take nothing away from Amanda and what she's done. Um, but that definitely, um, you know, Pena was in there to fight and she wasn't scared to take one to throw one. And sometimes that's what it takes to get in there and just and land the right shot. Yeah. I know this is really difficult for you, Holly, because you're still coming back from your injury and still looking to fight next year. But I know because you were scheduled to fight Juliana and I know you wanted that fight. And and I know yeah. when we spoke before the last one, you were, I won't say frustrated, but maybe a little frustrated that like yeah. she just kind of slid into the title fight without yep. actually, you know, winning another fight. Uh, yeah. Again, you got to focus on yourself right now, but how much does that fight fire you up to want to get back in there? Because it feels like, oh, you know, yeah. if not for the rematch, like you could get Juliana Pena right now, honestly. Yeah. It's honestly, that's a very feasible thing, you know? You never know what's going to happen. They're going to, are they going to say, Hey, let's rematch right away. There's even times a fighter will say, you know what? I need a little more time before a rematch or I need this or I need that. So you never know what's going to happen. So yeah, it's super frustrating. Uh, I plan on being right back in there. You know, I want to be able to say, Hey, I'm ready to fight whoever, whenever. And, um, and I'm real close to that. So, uh, I am excited that I'm real close to it, but, um, yeah, it's super frustrating. That's for sure. I probably know the answer, but I'll ask it anyways. Cause again, we don't know. I know Amanda has said she wants the rematch. It seems like it would make sense. Okay. That's great. But again, timing injuries, family, all these things could play in. If the UFC called you in like a month and said, Hey, do you want to fight Juliana? Can I imagine you would say 100% yes. That's what I would want to say. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, again, and I know it is, I know that's the tough part because you are the number one ranked fighter out there and there's only so many options for you. I know that was kind of the frustration with absolutely yeah. nothing against Norma Dumont. I'm not taking anything away right. from her, but Norma yeah. Dumont was just the only person who would fight you. You know what I mean? Right. Like that was pretty much yeah. it, right? Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. Kenya did say yes to the fight. You know, I had my whole kidney thing so but you know that that was only like a six week ordeal and I was hoping to have had that fight you know and then after that it's just kind of everybody kept calling out the champ calling out the champ trying to jump past me and you know I can't complain I wasn't able to take that fight and so you know uh I, I have to just train and fight and earn my spot and um I just hope that happens yeah. Yeah. Well, I looked before we talked, I don't generally look at rankings and things like that because again, where you're at, there's only so many options, but if you don't get Pena, uh, and I think that would be a great matchup depending on how fast Amanda wants to come back. But again, there's only a couple options out there for you, but hopefully this time around, whether it's Misha Aspen, or I would say Ketlin Vieira was the other name I saw there. One of them will say yes. And that will be your next opponent. Yeah. So you can at least at that point, earn your title shot. Right. Yeah, I feel like honestly, anything can happen. Anything. I feel like it could be any of those names, all the way from Pena down to you know, Misha, Vera, Aston. Like all, I feel like it could you know anything can happen, and so I just want to be ready for any of it. Would you at this point, considering we just had the shake of a way, would you say that you'd rather not do the featherweight thing again? I mean, I know you took featherweight only because that was the only option available to you. That's a lot of, you know, when I fought at featherweight, that's kind of been usually the case. You know, I'm, I'm always open to any fight, and that's why I took it. But um, if there's another opportunity that makes more sense, then, yeah, that's what I'm going to take. Because, I mean, yes, there's a belt at featherweight, but it's just 
you know, like I said, you never know what's going to happen. Is is Nunez, if she's going to fight right away, is she going to go back to the rematch? That's going to be at 135 anyway. What is the end goal in 145? What would I be really going for? You know, that's when I want to focus on 135, which 135 is where I, I like to be anyway. I mean, that's my that's my weight class. But it's just, yes, I fought at 45 because I'm open to both because I want, I want to fight. But, wow. yeah, it makes more sense for me to fight at 135. What do you think about, and I'm not even saying this is like an opponent thing, but what do you think about the UFC potentially bringing in someone like Kayla Harrison to fight? Because Kayla is a, a great name, great accomplishments in her own career, but she's only able to fight a featherweight. Like she could not fight a bantamweight. So the options would be limited for her. And I don't know that, I don't think the UFC is ever going to build out that division. I think you and I both know this. If they were going to do it, they would have done it by now. There's not a deep right. featherweight division. So like, I'm kind of curious, like, what do you think? Yeah, and I honestly, I think doesn't um, doesn't Kayla fight at fifty five? Like she'd have to like even get down to forty five. So then you've got like a big forty fiver, and then like thirty fivers that might want to come up. Maybe you know, there's always that. So um, I don't know. I don't know what they're planning on doing with her coming over. If she's coming over, you know, I feel like we'll just have to see how that plays out. If she really wants to come over and fight at you know 45 if that's something that she thinks she can do or not i'm not sure yeah uh before i get you out here holly two things i want to i want to close out on you know we talked and kind of started the conversation with boxing and i want to go back to that because you know i know you're not super super present on social media but you know sometimes i'm sure people ask you this question or they or you hear about the question there's been this big debate recently about who is the best boxer in the UFC. And I'm sure you've seen it, you know, Max Holloway, I'm the best boxer. Connor, of course, thinks he's the best boxer. Now to be clear, there's only one UFC fighter who is about to be inducted into the international boxers hall of fame. So Holly Holm is the best boxer in the I UFC. Let's get, that, <laughs> let's get that question out of there, but I'm taking you out of the conversation because you are the best. You are the most accomplished. You are 100% the best boxer in the sport period. Okay. Let's just put that out there. But in your opinion, if you were giving me your opinion, if you're playing analyst, Holly, who do you look at? And who do you think has, you know, really good boxing, Chris boxing? Cause we always have this debate and there's all these different people, Peter Yan and, and all these guys out there. I'm curious who you like, who do you look at and say, that's a really, really good boxer. You know, I think it's honestly really hard to put a name on it because as far as just boxing, it's just very different the way you even use boxing in MMA. So in order for me to actually be able to tell someone like, oh, yeah, you're the best boxer, I would like to see them boxing. Because the thing is, boxing is just different. You're wearing a little bit bigger gloves, and you're only using your arms. And when it gets into later rounds and you can still only punch and your arms feel like they weigh 100 pounds, let's see how crisp you can hit. You know, I feel like. There are, there's MMA boxing and there's boxing. And I think that's what's really hard. I think a lot of people, you know, talk about certain people's boxing, but, you know, even boxing, boxing and MMA is like, you're at a longer range because you still have to worry about kicks. And there's always like clinch involved with that. So you can clinch and throw punches out of that. So I just feel like it's really hard to say like, oh, this person's like the best boxer in MMA. It's like really hard. Um, there's some that don't mind exchanging and they focus more on their stand-up than their grappling. But as far as like being the best boxer, it's really hard to put like a name on it. Um, you know, I, I like, and I'm afraid to even throw out like a couple names that I'm thinking right now, because it's like, there's like, I could, you know, I could argue both sides of it. Um, but it's just, I mean, you have people sometimes that are just harder to hit because they have a long reach, but are they, are they using their MMA stance to keep that range and still land the punches? Like that's a good boxing sense in MMA, but would it be the same if they were just in boxing? You know, I guess it's hard to say. Yeah. Just I, listen, I know you're not an egotistical person, Holly, just say it. I am the best boxer and you are, you can say it because that's, it drove me crazy when everyone's having these debates and it's nothing against Max or, or Dustin or Connor or any of these other people saying that, but I'm like, there's one person. I would, I would like to box with, with majority of people in the OC for sure. Just box. I feel like I did real well. 
<laughs> yeah, like I'm just like there's only one person who actually has multiple championships in the sport of boxing, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's Holly Holm. Like it's just like I'm just like kind of I, I love the debate and I love people buzzing about it, but I'm like, oh, like, oh yeah, like, there's there's Holly and then there's kind of everybody else. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I accept that. I'll, I'll say I take pride in my boxing career. You know, um, it like I said, it, there's there's habits from boxing I had to break coming into MMA. You know, I had to not, you know, boxing, you can stand real close to someone and still throw uppercuts and hooks and not have to worry about anything else. You know, you start doing that in MMA, it's like, oh, they're on my legs and they're taking me down. Shoot. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, they're like grab onto you and clench onto you. So things are just different. It's just, you know, I would really like to actually see some of, uh, I like a lot of these MMA fighters do have boxing because they they that is part of mixed martial arts. That is an art that is part of mixed martial arts. Um, but it's still different when you compete with it. You know, I always tell people they always say, you know, if uh, what do you think is harder, like boxing or MMA? What do you think is hard? Is it easier to go from boxing to MMA or MMA to boxing? I definitely think it's easier to go from MMA to boxing because you already have some sort of knowledge of boxing because it's part of MMA. Yeah. But to go from M boxing to MMA, you only know boxing. And now all of a sudden, you got to learn everything. Clinch, ground game, wrestling, cage work, stand up, like all of it. You know, kick, high, like it's knees, it's everything. Elbows, like there's so many things you have no knowledge of. To go MMA to boxing, you at least have some knowledge of boxing, but it's still different. Yeah, and everyone that says who's the best boxer again, what boxing are we talking about? Are you talking about actual boxing? You talk about MMA boxing. There's a difference. Right, that's different. Yeah. It is that's yeah. different. Yeah, and I and not to use this as a bad example because she, she's your teammate, so I'm not trying to take a knock on her. But we had this conversation last time. Clarissa Shields, incredible athlete. I mean, incredible boxer, mm -hmm. arguably one of the best in the world right now. But we just mm -hmm. saw, you know, it's not easy. It is not e you not are easy. kind of you are a unicorn, Holly. You are literally the only person who's really done it at that level. I'll tell you what, when I came into MMA, I came in MMA because I was excited that I really actually wanted to learn wrestling and grappling and clinch work and better kicks and things like that. I didn't come to MMA to be a boxer in MMA. And I think that that sometimes and I'm not saying that I, I think Clarissa Shields is really wanting to learn these things as well, you know, but I think sometimes some people that are like, oh, they, I'll just rely on my boxing and I'll be able to just worry about takedown defense. Like, I think that you can't have that mindset. I think you have to really be like, you know what? I want to take, I want to take a bitch down too, <laughs> you know? And that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to still have finishes that I don't have yet. I have finishes by a, ref stoppage yes but like off of already you know having them rock from a kick or whatever like i still want to take someone down and i just want to ref to have to pull me off because i want to beat them down so bad i still want to get a submission i still want you know i still have dreams in mma and i think that that's why i was able to actually come in mma and be able to do what i've done so far and it's still so far from where i want to be there's so much i want to learn there's so much i want to get better at yeah. Uh, real quick before I let you go, you know, we've seen this trend now recently where we have seen a lot of MMA fighters go over and do the boxing thing. And I'll, listen, I don't begrudge anyone making money. Uh, you can go make money. You're going right. to get paid a million dollars to go over and fight Jake Paul or Logan Paul, or whoever you're right. fighting. Do it up. I'm curious yeah. because you've done the analyst thing, Holly. So I'm curious. I got to get your take on. Uh, did you watch the first Jake Paul, uh, Tyron Woodley fight? You know, I only got to watch half of it. I don't, I didn't have cable at the time and I was traveling. And so I was watching, like, I was kind of FaceTiming with a friend who was watching it. So I wanted to watch it, you know? Um, and so I'm excited to see the second fight around and see kind of, you know, where they, uh, you know, what, what's going to happen with the second fight. Uh, I kind of want to see how that goes. So. Do you, do you lean one way or the other when you look at that one? Because I know everyone likes to make fun of Jake Paul and he's a YouTuber and he's this, but you know, I've been around Jake. I, I'm not going to say, listen, Jake's not going to beat Canelo Alvarez or anything. Like, let's just, come on. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Let's not get there. But I, I think he is taking it seriously. And, and he did go eight rounds with Tyron the last time. I thought he won the fight. It wasn't the greatest fight ever, but I thought he won right. the fight. Um, you know, but I want to see, see people 
people that I know do well. Um, you know, Tyron's always been like super supportive of my MMA career. So I want to see him do well. I mean, you know, I don't really know Jake Paul. So I usually kind of root for the people I know. I'm, I'm, I'm like that. But at the end of the day, um, I got nothing against Jake Paul and the fact that, you know, he knows that it's money if he's going to talk up a fight. But he's the type that's like, I'm not going to just make money once. I want to make a lot of money. I'm going to keep doing this. So he's taking it seriously and he's training. So you can't knock him for actually, he's not, he's not, he's not just talking and not, uh, and not uh, working. You know what I mean? He, he obviously is, he, he wants to make this a career for himself. Like he knows that he's talked a lot and that's what's got him out there. And he, yeah, he's a YouTuber. But obviously, he's going to the gym, he's showing up, and he's working. So, you know, who knows what we'll see from him, if he's going to keep getting better or if he's going to start getting exposed. You know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, like I said, the fight will the fight will bring it out of you. If you're not ready for it, it will get exposed in there. And, you Absolutely. know, like or like him or not, you go in there with a, with a former UFC champion like Tyron Woodley, you're going to get exposed. He hung around for eight rounds. You can't hate the guy for that. Right, exactly. You can't, he obviously has done, uh, he's done some of his homework. So we'll see what happens going forward is, you know, I think sometimes too, after somebody wins a couple of times and all this hype is like, Oh, he really is good or whatever. Sometimes I get some people's head too. I don't know. Sometimes you just got to go in there and be like, no, you're not on my level. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, (laughs) I mean, like there's a lot of ways to look at it. Oh. That's true. It's absolutely true. Uh, Holly, thank you as always for taking the time for me. I really wanted to get you on because of course, you know, when I saw the international hall of fame, uh, you know, uh, announcement, I was just so happy for you. And and it's such a, I know, you know, to kind of come back around to that, it's such a rare thing to get that and, and you deserve it, but it's just so awesome. I was happy for you. So congratulations on that. I uh, very, so much. very, very much look forward to seeing you back in the action in 2022. And thank you again for doing this today. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you.